Today, chip makers are lying to you. GDDR7 is officially here. NVIDIA just ended a 19-year legacy, and NVIDIA's RTX 5090 is a monster. But it costs how much? Welcome everyone to GamerMelly. First up for today, I have a good reminder that the number you see next to nanometers when referring to the process a chip was built on does not mean the size of the transistors like many people think. If anything, it's essentially just marketing at this point, because it has no real correlation with anything physical on the node. In fact, the gate length of a transistor hasn't been connected with the stated node as far back as 1997. The half pitch remained with the name for years after that, but in the 2000s, engineers found many ways to improve performance without having to shrink the transistors. Then structural changes to the transistor itself made things more complicated. Eventually, it got to a point where the number had nothing to do with the actual dimensions of anything on the chip. They more or less tried to look at something called equivalent scaling, which is essentially using new techniques other than shrinking transistors to get more performance. But this ultimately devolved into whatever a company wants to call it. And this brings us to today's story. According to a new report from ZDNet, Samsung has decided to rename their second generation 3 nanometer process node to a 2 nanometer node. So nothing's changed at all. They just decided to change the name. This is assumed to be a way for Samsung to better compete with Intel's upcoming 20A production node. But once again, it was literally nothing but a name change. Basically, it's clear that something needs to change when it comes to process nodes. And there are some good ideas out there. But until companies decide to all agree on one standard, the names don't mean all that much. Next up for today, GDDR7 is officially here. But first, did you know that AI chatbots use something called tokenization that splits words into smaller units so text is more digestible to computers? That's the kind of stuff you can learn in Brilliant's new course on large language models. And Brilliant is where I go when I'm ready to learn something new in computer science. It's why they're a long-term sponsor of the channel and, of course, this video. But their awesome courses in STEM isn't the main reason I love Brilliant. It's actually thanks to the way they teach it, which isn't by getting you to memorize a bunch of formulas or anything like that, but by having you do it yourself with their unique puzzles that help teach complex topics in a fun and interesting way. It honestly makes learning easier than ever, and if you haven't tried it yet, now's the perfect time, because Brilliant is offering a free trial when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermelt or go to the QR code on the screen. Plus, when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermelt, you'll get 20% off their premium membership for life. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash gamermeld, or use the QR code on screen. Now back to the story, you heard that right. The GDDR7 standard has officially been made public, as the JEDEC Solid State Technology Association just announced the new standard on their site, where they define the standards for graphics double data rate 7 or GDDR7 graphics memory. And with that, we have specifications, new features, and more. For starters, it doubles the number of independent channels from 2 to 4, it supports 16 gigabit to 32 gigabit densities, improved signal to noise ratio with pulse amplitude modulation modulation, and more. But the biggest thing here is its speed. And there, GDDR7 doubles the bandwidth over GDDR6, reaching as fast as 192 gigabytes per second per device. Basically, this gives a substantial boost in memory speed, which should help to meet the ever-growing demands of modern video games. And as you would expect, many industry leaders made a statement about the announcement, with most more or less congratulating themselves for the part they played in making the new standard a reality. All in all, this is exciting news and I'm definitely excited for future GPUs to incorporate the new standard. Next up, NVIDIA apparently just ended a 19-year legacy. We heard about this late last year, but it looks to have finally happened. Originally shared on the Board Channel's forum and later reported by video cards, NVIDIA's most recent roadmap showed that the GTX 16 series has been completely discontinued, meaning NVIDIA has completely stopped production of the last remaining models, their GTX 1650 and 1630. It's apparently estimated that the remaining inventory will sell out within the next one to three months. And that's where the legacy I referred to comes in. The end of their 16 series cards also means the end of their GTX branding, something that PC gamers who've been here for a while should be all too familiar. It's obviously not a huge deal given it was ultimately replaced by the new RTX branding, but it's still a little surreal to see an end. And with that, what's your favorite GTX GPU that you've ever owned? Let me know down in the comments below. 
And lastly for today, NVIDIA's RTX 5090 is getting closer to launch. And thanks to that, we're finally starting to get information on a release, some insane performance, and even pricing. Starting things off in a recent video from Moore's Law is Dead, he claims that the 5090 is being validated right now, which means if everything goes well, we should at least get a paper launch this year. Of course, that's not a big surprise given NVIDIA's 4090 was released back in October of 2022. But it's great to hear that things are on track, as some rumors have been going around that there's a delay for Blackwell GPUs until next year. Now, I wouldn't really call that a delay since it hasn't been announced yet anyway, but I guess it would be a delay within NVIDIA's internal plans. So that's good to hear, but the news doesn't stop there, because in the same video, he claims that the 5090 will be as much as 70% faster than the 4090. In fact, according to a previous video from Moore's Law is Dead, he claims to be hearing performance numbers of 60 to 70% faster than current gen. So we're talking a pretty serious jump yet again, which is wow, given just how much faster the 4090 is when compared to all other gaming GPUs. Unfortunately, there is some bad news though, as he also mentions a potential price of $2,000 and up which if true is pretty wild. I mean, when the 3090 launched at $1,500, it was a genuine shock. Just the graphics card alone cost more than my entire first gaming PC, but $2,000 is absolutely bonkers. With that said, given people are willing to spend $1,500, I guess $2,000 isn't a huge stretch. At least it'll have a nice performance boost over current gen. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for NVIDIA's RTX 5090 or is that potential price tag just hurting your wallet? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash And as always, have a great day.